Hey guys, how's it going? So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you everything you need to know about using brushes and Procreate from the advanced settings to making your own custom brushes. These are actually clips from a much larger course that I created for Udemy on how to use Procreate. It goes through everything you need to know about it from beginning to end, gestures, layers, all that stuff. Um, so if you're new to Procreate, I really recommend it. If you use the link in the description, you can take the course for only $14.99 instead of its normal price, which is a huge discount. So if you like content like this, you want to see more, be sure to subscribe. And if you haven't, hit that bell notification so that you can be notified when new videos come out. So once again, enjoy, and I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, so in this lecture, we're gonna go over Procreate's brush system. So uh, the brush icon is the one in the top right that looks just like a paintbrush. You can see I already have it selected. It's the blue icon. And when it's selected, we can draw on our screen with either our stylus or our finger. Okay, and it's just going to paint on there with whatever color we have selected on whatever layer we have selected. Now, if we tap on the brush icon again, once it's already been selected, it's going to open up our brush menu. So if we look here on the left, we have our brush set. So if we come up here to sketching, we have sketching, inking, calligraphy, painting, artistic, airbrushing, textures, abstract, charcoals, elements, spray paint, uh, touch-ups, retro, luminance, industrial, organic, and water. Now, those are all the ones that come with Procreate. The rest of these are ones that are either created or downloaded but these ones are the ones that come standard. And if you click on each one, it's going to give you a bunch of different examples of the types of brush in that set. So for example, if we start with sketching, we can see we have bamboo chalk, shaded graphite, oil pastel, things like that. You can see down here on fat pencil and shading graphite, there's a little tiny procreate icon next to it, that little swish mark. And that means that brush has been edited. It's not the standard brush, it has something different about it, okay? So, um, there's a lot of things we can do from this menu. So we, one, we can select a new brush. So let's say we want this blotchy brush. We would come back to our menu and we can draw with it. Now each brush is gonna have its own separate properties and they will all behave differently and have different effects to them. The best way to kind of figure these out is really just experiment. Just try them out, try new things, see what you like, see what works. Um, let's go back here and see um, some other things that we can do. So. Let's say you want to create a new set so that you can organize your brushes how you want. All you have to do is come up here to the top and push new set and you can title it what you want. So let's say we want to call it, um, let's see, draw brushes, just for an example. And just hit return and it will create that new brush set. So right now there's no brushes in it. What we can do is come up to the right and hit this plus sign which will either allow us to create a new brush, which we'll go over later, or we can import a brush. So if we import a brush, it's gonna come up here. It's going to ask us where we want to import a file from. And you can import from wherever you want, your Google Drive, your Dropbox, anything like that. Wherever you have the stuff saved, you can go ahead and import that. And that brush or brush set will come right into Procreate. You can also use the drag and drop feature from the iPad Pro. So if you wanna delete a set, all you have to do is tap on it and you can either rename it or delete it. We're just gonna delete this one because we don't need it. And now we're back to our main one. Now, let's say you want to move your brush sets around, right? You want them to be in a different order based off of how frequently you use them. All you have to do is tap on one and hold it. So let's select charcoal and we can move it right up here under sketching. And there you go, they're in the same spot. Um, you can do this as much as you want. You can move them around. It's really convenient, really simple. Um, you can also do this with the brushes themselves. So let's say you want to move the brushes around within their brush sets. You can do that as well and move them wherever you like. You can also add them to different sets if you'd like. Okay. Um, the next thing is if you want to share or delete a brush, all you have to do is swipe to the left from the right and it'll bring up this menu. You can either share duplicate or reset a brush. If it's a standard brush that comes with Procreate, you cannot delete it. But if I wanted to uh, delete one of these ones down here, I could. I can share, duplicate, or delete. But since it's not a standard Procreate brush, it does not give me the reset option. So like this one, for example, this brush is one I created, so I can delete it, okay? Um, if you want to duplicate a brush so that you can uh, edit one but keep the original. You just hit duplicate and now you have two of them. And then you can do whatever you want with this. We can delete it or we can share it. 
and it will export as a .brush file. We can airdrop it to our computer, we can save it to our drive, email it, whatever we want to do with it. Okay. Um, and then if you want to select multiple brushes at once, all you have to do is swipe to the right. So we have one selected, we're going to swipe to the right on any other ones we want to add. And then we can move all of those all at once. All right, so in this lecture, we're going to go over the advanced brush settings. So to access these, we're going to open our brush menu. And then you can select any brush you want. I'm just going to go with this charcoal block brush. So we're going to click on it, and it's going to open up this menu. Now, these are the advanced settings, and you want to be really careful tampering with these because um, it can be hard to get it back. You can't always just reset it, um, but just remember, like, uh, you might want to duplicate if you want to if you want to change one of these that way. You can have the edited one and the original one, and you can tamper with the new one as much as you want and still keep that original one and your settings. Because if you reset it, it can be hard to get it back to where you had it before. So we're going to start at the very bottom. There's these little icons. We're going to start with the stroke menu, which is this one all the way to the left. So we have set that one, and you can see up here is the reset button. So if at any point you get messed up, you need to reset it. You can go ahead and select that. And we're going to go through each of these sliders one by one and explain what they do. So the first one is going to be spacing. So you can think of Procreate's brushes like a stamp. They have a shape and then they have a grain within the shape. And depending on how far apart or close together those are, that's going to be your spacing. So for example, if you have them really close together with no spacing in between it, it's going to be a much smoother line. And if you have them really far apart, you're going to be able to see each individual stroke uh, or stamp happen by itself. So you can see if we draw with this really quick, the spacing is really far apart and we're basically just stamping it down along the stroke line. But if we make the spacing smaller, we're going to get a smooth flowing line with which to paint. So I'll just reset it back to where it was, which is 8.9 and then you can see the big difference there. All right, so the next one is going to be streamline. That's going to be how much the uh, brush engine streamlines your stroke. So if you have it all the way off, it's going to pick up every single little uh, line and wobble and squiggle that you make. It'll be a lot easier to see if we bring the brush size down. So this is without streamline. Now if you turn streamline on, we're gonna go all the way just so you can see the difference it's going to smooth out your line quite a bit so that if you try and make squiggly lines it will really smooth everything out. Okay, It helps if you're trying to ink something or get really uh, nice smooth lines, that's going to be your best friend. Next one is going to be jitter, which is going to be uh, how randomized your strokes are. Do they fall along a nice smooth pattern or uh, are they kind of all over the place? Jitter can be really good if you're trying to make something like a leaf texture uh, or some other sort of really coarse rough pattern like that um, trying to get something like that in there so that's jitter we're going to keep that down where it was and then fall off is going to be uh, how quickly the brush falls off once you pick up your pencil so you're drawing and it just stops right so um, if you don't want there to be any fall off just have it all the way down to zero Fall off is going to be good for like if you want a brush that sort of simulates a pencil and the lead is getting lower and lower, uh, something like that. So it doesn't draw forever. So for example, like maybe you want to draw a bunch of fur, you turn the fall off on and it will automatically end your stroke at a certain point. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and turn that off. Uh, stroke taper is going to be whether or not your brush gets smaller at the beginning when you start drawing and whether it gets smaller at the end when you start drawing. So let's go ahead and right now, let's pick a different color so we can see as we're painting here. So right now we have uh, no stroke taper, okay? It just is one complete square flat line. But if we turn this on, we'll go all the way up just so we can see, it's gonna start out with that little point. And then it should be the same if we end it with that as well. You can see it kind of does, not as much, and I'm not sure why it does that, but um, that's what the end does. And then we have opacity. We can turn this down here, which is going to be how opaque it is, starting from the beginning and the end. So, and then size is going to be the same thing. Okay, 
let's go ahead and reset that perfect all right let's go to the next one which is shape so shape is going to be um, kind of the outline of our stamp shape what is being stamped down so scatter is obviously going to be scattering it how what angle it's turned at so let's go back here just really quick so you can see what I'm talking about if we space this out a little more then come to scatter you can see that what it's changing is the rotation of these different uh, different stamp shapes okay and if you look really closely you can also see that even though the stamp shape is rotating the grain which is kind of the texture inside of that is staying the same okay so we have that then we have rotation which is going to uh, rotate all of them and then that's going to be the scatter okay randomized is going to just make it completely random um, azimuth if I remember correctly it means it's going to follow uh, it's gonna stay the same no matter what direction you go kind of like calligraphy so if uh, we're drawing you can see that the stroke shape is pretty much staying the same it kind of goes with the pencil so let's go ahead and turn our spacing back down maybe not that low you can see we'll get a new color here so we can see what's going on um, you can see that it's kind of like how a calligraphy brush is it doesn't really follow my pencil um, or sorry it does follow my pencil it doesn't really turn on its own if we turn that off you can see it just goes whatever angle I do it doesn't do that calligraphy effect okay um, and then the last one is going to be filtered which is if you have filtered on it will have its anti-aliasing which means that it kind of softens the grain texture so if you zoom in it's not quite as sharp you don't get these jagged pixels if we were to turn it off and draw and zoom in you could see the difference this one has a lot softer edge at the top and the one on the bottom has a much more jagged response when it's painted so you're gonna want those all on. So let's go ahead and reset it again. Just put it back to the standards. Okay, then we're gonna go over to grain, which is the next one. Grain is going to be what's being rolled into our stamp shape. So imagine we have like a paint roller with a texture on it and our stamp or the shape is kind of the outline that's going to be rolled into. So rolling is exactly that. If you have it turned all the way off, it simply won't do that at all. It'll just smear it around. So you can see now our grain isn't really being rolled it's just being smeared and if you have it all the way on it's going to be straight rolling it's just going to be printing that texture and then if you go anywhere in between you can kind of get a mix of those effects okay so um, the next one is scale and that's going to be how big is the grain inside of your stamp do you want it to be really tiny and fine or do you want it to be really big and visible? If you make it really big, you'll be able to see every little thing as you stamp it. And if you make it small, it'll just kind of disappear into uh, a little bit of a blur, depending on how small you go. Um, zoom is gonna be how zoomed in you are on the grain. Rotation is going to be whether or not the grain itself rotates or if it just stays up and down. And then filtered, if we turn that on and off, is going to affect um, whether or not the grain scales when we make the brush go up and down in size or if it just stays the same. Um, a lot of these are really advanced and most of the time you're probably not going to need to worry about them unless you're really trying to dig in and make a really complex brush but we're going to go over all of them just in case anyway so you know where they are and what they do. Um, Alright so next we are on dynamic. So at the top we have three options. It says brush rendering and then it says normal, glazed, or wet mix. We're going to go over each of these. So the first one is normal. So opacity dynamics are going to be either for jitter or speed. So what that means is that uh, if we have it set to uh, minus 100%, then when we paint or draw, it's going to take into account how fast we draw. So for example, if I draw really slow, you won't even be able to see it. You can see where my little cursor icon is. I'll make it bigger so you can see but nothing's really show up. But if I draw really fast, that's when it will start to pick up. So 
I'm not sure how often you might use that. I never use it, but it's there. Um, you can also go the complete opposite way so that if you draw slow, it picks up, but if you draw really fast, it starts to disappear. Um, so you keep that, I typically keep that at zero. Um, jitter is going to ram randomize the opacity dynamic so that way you're drawing. Um, some of them will be less or more opaque than others. Size dynamics uh, is going to be how big or small your brush gets maximum size. And jitter is going to randomize that as well, the size. Okay. So let's go ahead and reset. Next one is going to be pencil. So the first menu we, oh, you know what? Let's go back, we forgot, glaze and wet mix. So let's tap on glaze. So normal is just going to be normally painting, putting stuff down. Glazed, um, accumulative is gonna be turned off for glaze. And what that means is that when you paint, uh, it doesn't build up on top of each other. It only ever fills in what's there. So let's go ahead, we're gonna clear this layer so we can start fresh. Okay, so what I mean by that is if I just draw in one continuous stroke, even if I draw over itself, it's not going to build up paint like it would with a normal brush. The only way I will do that is if I lift my brush up and then start drawing again, that'll start to build up. When we're painting with a normal brush, it will go down and as we draw back over our stroke, it'll get darker and darker and darker and darker and darker every time without having to lift up, lift up our brush. So that's the difference there. Um, and if you turn on accumulative, it will build up like a normal brush again. Then we have flow, which is going to be how much paint is coming out of our brush as we paint. And then we have speed and opacity dynamics, which are just like the other one that we went over. Then uh, let's go ahead and reset that. The next one is going to be wet mix. Now wet mix is meant to simulate painting with a real paintbrush with oil or acrylics. So the first option is dilution. Dilution is kind of how much water is added to our mix. If we have really low dilution, our pigment's going to be really strong and really thick, and there's not gonna be as much paint mixing. If we have really uh, high dilution, it's going to be very watered down and really, really mix up the paint a lot, as you can see here. So even if I, let's pick a different color here, you can see uh, as I paint, it's not even adding pigment because of how high the dilution is, it's just mixing it around, it's basically just water. So if we turn it somewhere in the middle though, it'll give us a bit of both. It'll add some paint and mix some around. You're gonna want it, I mean, if you're trying to make a wet brush look, you're gonna want it somewhere towards the middle to lower half so that you can still get paint down, but it will still mix stuff up. Then we have charge, which is going to be how much paint is put on the brush whenever you pick it up and put it back down again. So when you first put it down, um, if you have it at 100%, it's going to have a ton of paint on it. And if you have it really low, it's only going to have a little bit before it kind of starts to run out. Attack is going to be how aggressively uh, it puts paint down. And then pull is going to be how much it pulls paint around when it's blending. So if you have a really high pull, it's really going to make a difference. And if you have, uh, let's go with another color just so you can see here. It really mixes stuff up. If you have a low pull, it won't do anything. Uh, and then grade is just the grade of paint. So, um, and then the last two are just the same as the other ones. Okay, now we can move on to pencil. So pencil is going to be uh, really based off of how we hold our pencil and how much pressure we're applying. So, for example, opacity is at max. So. Uh, depending on how much pressure you put, it's going to be really hard to get this to be a light color because of how high the opacity is. So let's go ahead and reset this. If we lower the opacity here all the way to the opposite end, then the harder we push, the less opaque it will be. So right now, with the setting now, if I push really lightly, which is what I'm doing now, I'm barely touching the canvas, the less I touch it, the darker it gets. And then if I push harder, it starts to disappear until I start pushing lighter again, and then it comes back. If you do the opposite direction, then the lighter you push, you push really light, like right now, it barely shows up, and then the harder I push, it gets darker. Typically, most of the time, you're probably gonna be painting like that, uh, then the other one, if you have it right in the middle, 
there will be no opacity pressure. It will just be the same opacity no matter how hard you push. Okay. Bleed is going to be how much it bleeds over when you're doing that. Size is going to be how big or small it gets when you push on it. So if I push really soft, the brush will get tiny. And if I push really hard, the brush will get big. And you can do vice versa, just like with the opacity. If you turn it down and you push soft, it'll have a big size. And if you push hard, it will get really thin. Okay. Um, most of the time, you probably won't do this. It's pretty unnatural to draw like that because when we're drawing in real life, the harder we push, the darker it gets. And there's not really any traditional sort of medium where the lighter you draw, the darker it gets. So it's going to feel really, really weird to draw like that. But if you want to, it's there. It's an option. Then we have softness, which is going to be the same thing uh, as the other ones. The bigger it is, then the more pressure it will become more soft. And with it turned off, the less pressure it will become soft. With this type of brush, it's not very visible, so um, you don't really have to worry about it a lot, but uh, it's there. The next one is Apple Pencil Tilt. So if you're using an Apple Pencil, this will be affected. If not, it won't matter. You can ignore this. So Apple Pencil, um, once you turn it to a certain degree, it will start affecting the page differently. It will become either bigger, the brush will. So I don't think it does anything with this brush, but if we go to something like, say, uh, the 6B pencil, for example, if we draw with it like normal, it will just create a stroke. But if we turn our pencil sideways like we're trying to shade, we'll get a much broader, softer stroke, as you can see. Okay, let's try uh, something a little bigger. Let's do the fat pencil. So if I'm drawing normal, it looks about like this. And then if I turn it sideways, we can get this really soft, broad stroke going on. Okay, and that's what that means. So if we come over here, you can see uh, the Apple Pencil Tilt. You can adjust what angle it needs to be at for that to happen. You can adjust uh, whether or not the opacity gets turned on when you turn it sideways, whether or not there's a gradation, the bleed, the size of that. And all that is only going to happen when you turn it sideways. Okay. Next, uh, let's go back to our charcoal block brush. Um, let's go to general next, which is going to be uh, just all the general characteristics of our brush. The first one is the brush name. You can change that just by tapping on it if you'd like. Or there we go. Or maybe not. I guess you can't change it. Seems like you should, but it's not letting me for some reason. It's probably because, oh, you can, it's just that this is a standard brush in Procreate, so you can't change the title. If it was your own created brush or edited brush, you can change the title to whatever you want. Um, you can turn this on and off, which is the stamp preview, so you can either see the stroke preview, which is what's showing now, or you can see the preview of just one individual stamp of that brush looks like. Then you have uh, how big the preview is if you want to really be zoomed in and see what it's going to look like or kind of zoomed out to get an idea of the total brush stroke. Then we have brush behavior. You can either orient it to the screen, which means when we turn the screen, the brush is going to match that. As so if we have a brush that just follows wherever our pencil goes, this isn't gonna matter. But if we have a brush that's sort of like a calligraphy brush that stays in one angle, uh, no matter where we move our brush, then this will matter because it will depend on how we're old, holding our iPad will determine which way the shape is facing. Blend mode, you can change the blend mode of your brush just like you would your layer mode. So if you want a brush that always paints in multiply, you can do that and paint right onto a normal layer with a multiply brush. If you don't know what layer modes are, uh, we'll go over all of that in detail in the layer section because going over it here would be a huge whole other thing and it's the exact same thing as the layers. So if you don't already know what that is, just wait till we get to layers and then you can apply that exact same thing to picking your layer for your brush. Um, then we have smudge, which is just going to be how much smudge it moves around. So if you're, especially if you're using the smudge tool, you're going to want to choose that to affect how strong of a smudge it has and how much it smudges its own brush when it's painting. Then we have size limits. The max size limits is going to be how big the brush can get and how small the brush can get 
based off of the sliders when you're trying to change it. So if you want it at its biggest size to only get to right there, you can change that or you can have it get as big as you want. Do keep in mind that the bigger you make your brush, the more computing power it takes for your iPad and you can start to experience a little bit of lag. And then opacity limits is how opaque it can get and how soft it can get. So if you want it to be able to not get opaque at all, you can make the minimum extremely high so that the softest it ever gets is right there or you can turn it all the way down to there it's up to you um, however you want to do it and then the last one is source which is going to be um, for editing uh, the shape source and then the grain source so if you invert the shape it's going to make it so that it's painting everything but the dark spot and now it will be painting the white. So either way it's going to paint that white so you can be painting with basically a square with a hole in it or a little tiny white rectangle and uh, you can swap different things out. Procreate has a bunch of things in here already that you can switch through to create your own custom brushes. Um, same with the grain you can invert it and swap from the grain library. Okay or you can just insert your own photo um, to really customize a brush. If you're going to be editing these you might as well just be creating a new brush because this is the foundation for the brush unless you really like all the other settings you just want to change the shape then this is a good option so that's it for this lecture i know it was a lot to cover and it's really in depth it's kind of hard to grasp honestly the best way to really understand the brush system is to just experiment start painting try out all the different brushes that are in there edit them see what you can come up with in the next lecture we'll go over how to create your own custom brush and hopefully that will help shed a little bit more light on it so that's it for this lecture i'll see you guys in the next one all right, in this lecture, we're going to go over how to create your own custom brush. So to do this, you're going to tap on the brush icon twice in order to open it up. And then with one of your sets selected, you're going to click on this plus sign at the top right corner. And this is going to create the brush in whatever set you have selected. So uh, make sure you pick that beforehand, or if you need to, you can make a new set. So we're going to hit that plus sign, and it's going to say Untitled Brush. So we can change the name to whatever we want it to be. And we're going to make a smoke brush. Okay. And we need to import a shape here. So it says select shape. Whoops, let's get that back up. I have to try that again. So um, smoke brush. I don't know why it shut us out. We'll just do it again. Okay. And then select shape, we're going to select, um, we're going to insert a photo. And I'm going to pick one, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, I'm going to pick one from brushes. These are some that I've already saved. And for the smoke one, I'm going to go with this brush right here. Okay, this shape. So this is just a shape I made in Procreate on a square canvas with it set to PNG, so it had a transparent background. All it is is this white box with these little shapes in the middle, and you'll see how this creates a smoke brush, okay? And then for the grain source, we're just going to pick one from the Pro Library, and for the grain, we're just going to go with something that's nice and flat and uh, hard and filled all the way in, like this, the blank one, okay? That's all we need. So now we can come over here. Didn't save it as smoke brush for some reason. Let's try again. All right, so now we can edit the properties of this brush. So first off, we're gonna want the spacing to be very smooth, okay? We don't want the streamline on a whole lot. We don't want there to be any jitter. Uh, we can have a little bit of fall off. Stroke taper, um, we want the start to have just a little bit of opacity and I don't really think we want size a whole lot. Oh well, yeah, I guess we could do size. Um, shape, we don't want any scatter, we don't want any rotation. Um, we do want azimuth on. Actually, I'm trying to think, do we want that on? No, we want we want that off. Okay. Um, grain. We can leave all of that. Normal. We want this to be set to normal. We don't want glaze. We don't want wet. 
um, we don't want any sort of speed dynamics pencil we do want a little bit of opacity we don't really want a whole lot of size so we're gonna put it just barely right there softness we can go ahead and leave pencil tell we're not gonna worry about general we're gonna call this the smoke brush use stamp preview we don't need to do that into screen blend mode smudge max and min all right that looks uh that looks pretty good let's go ahead and give it a shot so we're going to go ahead and give ourselves a dark background so that we can uh, make some really cool smoke here and i'm going to try doing some bright sort of green smoke and uh, let's give this brush a try see how it works all right so right off the bat we can see that there's probably some things we want to change one of them I think is going to be the opacity and I also think we want to change um, the the way it orients so we're going to change this to I think it's shape we're going to turn azimuth on and we're going to turn the opacity where is that let's find what we want here we want the opacity max to be about like that nope maybe a little less okay all right and then the next thing we need to do that we I think I missed is going to be the size yes that is the one so um, we want that all the way up so that when we go little and big we can create different sizes and then the max size we want it to be pretty big all right So you can see we can get some pretty cool smoke effects with this. And depending on what color you make it, you can either make it look like it's glowing or it can just be white smoke. So yeah, there's how you can make a brush. Like I said, there's pretty much infinite possibilities with what you could do with this. And it's really just going to come down to experimenting. Try new things, try out different ideas, and uh, see what you can come up with. The brush system is not quite as versatile as, say, Photoshop, but it still can pack a pretty hefty punch. So give it a shot. I'd love to see what brushes you come up with in the Q&A. So that's it for this lecture, and I'll see you guys in the next one.